Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can I uh, thank you all for coming? I'd like to uh, acknowledge, firstly, uh, Commissioner Bob Atkinson, uh, Police Minister Jack Dempsey, and uh, Commissioner-designate uh, Ian Stewart, currently the Deputy uh, Commissioner. <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I want to start by acknowledging uh, the great service to the people of Queensland since 1968 of uh, Bob Atkinson, uh, who will be leaving the service at the end of October this year. Uh, Bob has uh, worked in many, many roles around this state. Uh, he's been involved in very significant post-Fitzgerald um, reforms, and he has served with distinction as the Commissioner since the 1st of November 2000. So it's a very long and extensive career, but particularly a stint uh, for 12 years at the top of the service. Uh, and uh, truly, uh, the job of Police Commissioner in any Australian state at any time is a tough job, uh, and he has done it for a long period of time. And uh, we really want to thank you, Bob, Thanks for all the work that you've thank done you. for Queensland. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, however, uh, all good things must come to an end. And uh, over the last three to four months, there has been an extensive, uh, transparent and rigorous uh, selection process to find a replacement for Commissioner Bob Atkinson. There was a selection panel uh, headed up by John Grayson, the Director General of the Premier's Department. Uh, we had Mr Nick Keelty, former, former Commissioner of the Australian Federal Police, uh, General Peter Arneson, former Governor of Queensland, Senior Defence Force Officer, and Ms Margaret Allison, who is currently the Director General of the Department of Communities here in Queensland. Uh, we had um, a, a nationwide recruitment process. There were 13 people who were on the long list, and that was down, narrowed down to a short list of five people. And in the last fortnight, uh, mm. the Minister and myself were informed then of the final race with uh, two individuals, uh, and that is the first time that uh, we had any uh, involvement uh, or knowledge of the process. So today I'm delighted to announce on behalf of the people of Queensland that uh, the <coughs> uh, person selected to take the torch from Bob Atkinson mm. is uh, Deputy Commissioner Ian Stewart. And I want to congratulate you, Ian, Thank uh, you, sir. for, uh, for uh, winning this, this race. Um, just a few things about uh, Ian's career. Uh, he is, of course, a career Queensland police officer. Uh, he's had 39 years service uh, for the people of Queensland. And I think it's something we should note today that we are delighted as a government that we've been able to select someone from within the QPS mm. who will, though, continue on with the important reforms uh, that Bob has been working on over the last few years. We're also delighted that uh, someone as distinguished as Ian, uh, who provided that uh, very steady uh, sort of... Uh, a role during the, the, the floods and the cyclone of last year ha has uh, been successful in becoming the Commissioner. Uh, and I think all Queenslanders will, will, uh, will recognise you immediately, Ian, that you're no stranger to them. Um, I, I note that uh, Deputy Commissioner Stewart holds a Master of Public Policy Administration and Bachelor of Business Qualifications. He's a Fellow of both the Institute of Police Administration Australia and the Australian Institute of Management. He's a graduate member of the Australian Institute of Company Directors. Deputy Commissioner Stewart is also a recipient of the Australian Fulbright Professional Scholarship, the National Emergency Medal and the Australian Police Medal. He's married to Carol and they have three adult children. So congratulations, Ian. Would you like to say a few words? Premier, uh, to you, thank you. Uh, Minister, uh, thank you also. Uh, Commissioner Atkinson, ladies and gentlemen, um, I am extremely grateful for the incredible honour that has been announced today selecting me as the Commissioner-designate of the Queensland Police. I do not underestimate the significant tasks ahead and the responsibility that attaches to this position. I want to acknowledge those involved in my selection and to promise all Queenslanders that I will always strive to do my best in this role, as I have done throughout my career. I look forward to working with the Newman Government to implement the policy directions they have announced for policing and government agencies generally. While there are significant challenges ahead for all departments, there are also great opportunities and <coughs> I intend to discuss these with government over the forthcoming weeks and months. I wish to also acknowledge the great leadership shown by Bob Atkinson over the past 12 years and thank him for his commitment to Queensland throughout this, his time in the Commissioner's role. I look forward to working with him 
to ensure a seamless transition at the end of October. Finally, I wish to address all the men and women who make up what I believe is one of the finest police departments in Australia, if not the world. I thank you for your past commitment and I ask that every one of you continue to work hard each day to protect the Queensland Police reputation by ensuring we all maintain the high standards the community rightly expects of us. I am extremely proud that I will have the privilege to lead you in maintaining the security and safety of all who make up our great state. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ian. Um, Commissioner, would you like yeah. to say a few words? <coughs> Indeed, Premier. Thanks very much. And Premier, thank you for being at headquarters today to make this important announcement. So can I start by congratulating Ian Stewart as the Commissioner Delegate and wish him well uh, in terms of his role, uh, which he'll take up in just uh, under a couple of months' time. There are a number of dimensions uh, to the job of being the Police Commissioner. Uh, Ian Stewart, in my view, is a fine choice. He's an outstanding police officer. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, the government as well in choosing um, a senior member of the Queensland Police Service for this role and not going outside the organisation. I think that's uh, been a good decision, of course, um, and I think uh, Ian Stewart will, without question, discharge all of the responsibilities of the job as your Commissioner with great credit. Uh, I'm very confident in the future of the Queensland Police Service. I think this is a fine and outstanding announcement today, and I feel privileged and fortunate to have been able to represent you as the Commissioner of this Police Department for what will be 12 years when I conclude. Premier, that's all I'd like yeah. to say at this time. Well, I'd thank like you. to say no, thanks thank as well, but Mayor we'll have a few fun. more farewells as well. A bit, Bill, I think we'll have a, a Melba farewell or two. There you go, <laughs> Commissioner, thank you. Did you want to say anything? Jack, at all? Just, uh, just briefly, I'd just obviously like to uh, congratulate the uh, Commissioner Designate uh, <coughs> Ian Stewart. He's a, a very proud professional and a great leader. We, sh we saw his leadership through the floods and the cyclones and, and other tragedies that have occurred throughout Queensland. And uh, I know that uh, he has a great relationship with the people of Queensland. He wants to work hard for the people of Queensland. And I look forward to working with him and obviously our, our, still our current Commissioner uh, Bob Atkinson over the next uh, days, weeks and months to have this uh, a seamless transition for the people of Queensland and we can, so we can maintain a, a proud professional Queensland police service that has the, has the support of the people of Queensland and uh, I, just, I know that Ian will do a great job and I wish him and his family all the best for the, uh, for the years, to, years ahead. Thanks Ian. Okay. Over to you ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Ian Stewart stand out ahead of all the rest of the pack. Look, uh, obviously with the, uh, there's an independent panel and uh, that independent panel got down to uh, five uh, very distinct uh, and distinguished uh, uh, officers and uh, obviously um, they, uh, that independent panel gave us that name and Ian's quality of leadership, um, obviously his, um, his expertise that he, shown, that he was shown through the, uh, the, the number of disasters, particularly the floods and the, uh, and the cyclones, but also the, the, the reforms that the Queensland Police Service will be going through in the next couple of years and uh, he does have a, uh, an expertise particularly in the, uh, the technical side in, in relation to uh, IT and uh, his previous performances with Q Prime, and uh, I know that uh, he will work well uh, for the people of Queensland. And he also has a great empathy and respect from the, the rank and file within the Queensland Police Service. It's a tough job; it's one of the toughest in the in the state. And I know he's he's already exhibited great leadership. Will uh, bring uh, bring him to the fore. How tough is the job? Is it a tough job? Uh, <laughs> it has its moments. Uh, but it's a great job. It, it's, it's a privilege to be able to do it, it really is. And if you've been a career police officer and that's what you've devoted your life to, then to be able to represent your department, to have a contract with the government to fulfil the role, um, to be responsible for what the police do, which is to provide for the safety and security of the people <coughs> of Queensland, uh, then that, yeah, that's a great privilege. What's your advice? <laughs> I don't think he needs too much advice from me. I He'll think write it in uh, a letter and pop it in the um, desk drawer. I think, that's I think the usual way to do it. I think he's uh, more than capable of doing this job in his own way. <laughs> and uh, I feel very relaxed uh, and confident about the future of the organisation under his leadership. Sorry, Commissioner. When and how were you told and are you surprised? Um, to all three, um, I only learned about this uh, privately last night um, for the very first time uh, as, a, 
as a, uh, an adjunct to the overall selection process, which has been quite rigorous. Um, certainly, uh, I was very happy uh, that I have been given this privilege, and as I said, I, I am a very, very proud police officer, but I'm a very proud Queenslander, and uh, I am grateful that uh, I've been given this opportunity, and mm. I'll strive hard every day to, um, to live up to that. Were you surprised? Um, I think it's one of those things that when you're up against great competition, as I was, uh, you always have in the back of your mind that um, you know you can you can certainly look at the prize, but uh, whether it's going to be yours, you don't know. And there were great competition. The people that uh, who were shortlisted in particular uh, uh, certainly are people that I have uh, a huge amount of respect for. How long have you signed for? A big pardon. How long have you signed on to do the job for? Is it? Um, the normal contract is a three plus two option, and I understand that that's what the government uh, will offer me. You mentioned that there were challenges ahead and great opportunities. What do you see as those challenges and opportunities? Uh, obviously, um, uh, the fiscal issues that the state is currently struggling with, um, uh, certainly that's probably at the forefront of my mind. Um, technology uh, and uh, Queensland Police has over a number of years put in place a, a range of foundation blocks that will allow us to capitalise um, on, on technology to make our, our people's jobs safer and more efficient. And in this type of environment where we're watching every penny, uh, we've got to balance uh, the cost of that technology, technology and how we roll it out. Uh, the other major uh, issue for me will be the fact that G20 is on our doorstep. Um, it's only uh, less than a couple of years away and that's going to take a huge amount of, uh, of effort on our part as an organisation to deal with uh, professionally. No, no mention of um, rebuilding the relationship with the CMC and amongst your challenges there? Uh, I think we have a very good relationship with the CMC mm. and um, certainly one of the things that I'll be doing in the next mm. couple of months during uh, the transition period is talking to Ross Martin and making sure that um, you know our relationship is as strong as ever. Uh, we don't always agree with the CMC, and, but I think that that's a very healthy way for it to be. Um, but certainly uh, at a professional level, uh, I look forward to working with Ross Martin in his role. Well, of course, yeah. I should just, can I just throw in as well, I should have mm. said, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of due process, <coughs> just for the avoidance of doubt, of course, following the required legal process, uh, Ross Martin was consulted uh, with this appointment. And did he give us approval? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, yes. absolutely, of course, yeah. 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 I don't think you can ever stand still uh, on any of our programs or our systems. Um, obviously things change very, very rapidly, our environment's always moving. Uh, if you stand still you're actually going backwards. I think there is room for, import, uh, for improvement in the police discipline process and I'll be working and talking to government about that, uh, uh, the initiative to take that forward. What, what, are, what areas do you think need improvement? I think there's a whole range of areas, particularly in the managerial uh, guidance area, that can be uh, perhaps brought, delegated back down to supervisors where it should be, um, and certainly we'll, we'll discuss that. But the other, probably the other major area is the speed at which uh, we address uh, mm. some of the investigations. It's unfortunate. Um, uh, part of it is our culture that um, when we do investigations, uh, we, we certainly go into detail. I, I often wonder whether we need to go to that level uh, if we can get agreement with the officers concerned uh, of the issues that they're dealing with. What about the post Palm Island recommendations about Commissioner <coughs> having the power to sack officers and things like that? Uh, that's certainly, uh, th you're talking about Commissioner's confidence and certainly that's an issue that over time mm. I'm sure that uh, I will have a discussion with the Minister mm. and ultimately the Government. Will, will it stay the Queensland Police Service under you or will it change to the Queensland Police Force? Um, I haven't had that discussion. Uh, there are obviously, there's always issues uh, in terms of, of names. 85% of our people have never been part of the Queensland, were never part of the Queensland Police Service, a force, sorry. They are part of the Queensland Police Service, but that's a matter for further discussions with mm. the Minister. Will you be doing <coughs> some of the regions that you haven't got to when during your disaster sort of um, work? Um, I, one of the privileges I have is uh, spending a lot of time in aircraft and uh, I've certainly <coughs> been around the state. In fact, uh, last year I think I went to every Indigenous community at least twice um, and that's right across the state and, I, and in, in that travelling I get to a lot of the other areas. So certainly I see the role of the Commissioner just as I see as the role of a Deputy to be out there talking to our people on the ground, making sure that we understand the issues that they're facing. Was it always a goal of yours, a dream, to become Commissioner? Um, I've 
always had a dream of doing the very, very best I can at the rank level I'm at, and if the promotion comes from that, well, I'm good. Um, certainly, I've always had that level of uh, that spark, though, um, for uh, to move up and to move on. Uh, but I, you know, it's almost uh, it's almost surreal to be uh, selected for this particular role, um, and the timing. Uh, for me is just wonderful. What sort of advocate will you be for the, for the service uh, facing these cuts? Um, are you willing to push back against the gentleman beside you? And, um, and has uh, the proposed cuts... Tre Treasure's not here, Michael. <laughs> 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 yeah, I didn't think you were saying that. Um, uh, well, have you been briefed as to where, where those cuts uh, are going and, and how deep they're, they're going to be? I've certainly been part of the internal processes that we've been carrying um, through looking at what the implications are of, of cuts to, the, to our organisation, of the fiscal restraint that's necessary for all agencies. Um, and uh, into the future, I would, I would think uh, if, I, if the roles were reversed, I'd be very disappointed if my new commissioner didn't push back. I mean, part of my role, as I see, is that um, to d have rigorous discussions mm -hmm. with government about the needs of, of the department, and I certainly be uh, taking that that ball right up to uh, right up to the mm -hmm. premier and to the minister. Mm -hmm. How big a challenge do you think the, um, the bikey situation is? I don't think we should ever lose sight of uh, outlaw motorcycle gang uh, and what they represent, and certainly uh, that's an area that um, uh, we can never drop the ball on. Uh, we have Task Force Hydra, and I think it's one of our most successful areas of the organisation. But it's like many of the policing issues. You can single out single single out issues such as the uh, OMCGs. You can single out um, issues of, of dealing with um, alcohol fuel violence. Uh, the point is that uh, we've got to be rigorous in all of the things that we do every day. It's a very, very broad spectrum that our people are faced with. Premier, you said the shortlist came down to two. Who was the other person? Oh, look, that's of course not uh, appropriate at all that I would talk about that, um, I'm afraid. Yeah. Yeah. But there were great that, people on that list, <coughs> yeah, fantastic people. It was a strong competition. You said you had a direct message there for the troops about you know, your new role. Speaking to that officer that pulled someone up for speeding tonight or whatever, what do you say to them about your role as the new commissioner? How, how are you going to... Be there for them. I expect them to do their job. I expect them, though, to remain professional at all times. We equip and train our people to <coughs> manage any circumstance they find themselves in, even even if that means uh, use of force right up to deadly force. I mean, that's why our officers are so well trained. Uh, but I expect them to maintain the standards and do the job as we require them to do. Uh, Premier or, or Minister. Um, uh, one of the thinkings, or one of the recommendations of the Fitzgerald report was to always um, consider, uh, when appointing a commissioner, uh, someone from outside. Um, and uh, the thinking uh, has been echoed throughout the Western world in regards to policing, um, that they should some to often consider bringing someone in new to shake it up, uh, someone from, from outside of, of, uh, of the structure. Um, was that a consideration? Um, you've, made, uh, you've made mention of that you're happy that he's, he's been appointed yeah. from within. Oh, look, that, that's a fair question. Um, look, in terms of the selection panel, I think it's fair to say that they were because initially when we set this up, mm. uh, we, we you know they had a you know, they had their terms of reference, if you like, as, as the panel. And uh, uh, I mentioned John Grayson's role as the director general, but it was it was very much in their mind mm. uh, about you know, going external, uh, someone someone from outside the organisation for the reasons that you have said versus an internal candidate and. That was part of their their deliberations, as I understand it. So they did make that call, but um, you know, well, I, I I just put forward that I think Ian's um, someone who's not going to just uh, mm. accept the status quo, uh, and that's no disrespect to to Bob, who's mm. who's here with us today. It's about that he wants to improve <coughs> the organisation, and he knows that you know that there are technological changes and challenges. It is reflected on all sorts of new pressures on policing that we have to come to grips with. And uh, you know, so this is this this bloke is going to be a reformer just as much as I think as, a, as an external person. And what did you say to Carol and the kids when you got that phone call? Um, I was actually with Carol and the kids uh, when I got that. Well, two of the three uh, when I got the phone call last night, and uh, it was a, a very interesting conversation. They were very happy. Good Father's Day, Brendan. It was a great Father's Day. <laughs> um, were you just 
I think I <laughs> absolutely I will. In fact, um, uh, I've actually drafted the tweet for straight after this um, conference. Because he said he would. He's changed his handle. Though. He's got to change his. <laughs> How are you and Mr. Atkinson going to work together? How's it going to work for the next couple of months? Um, well, the commissioner <laughs> might want to comment on that, but uh, but certainly I've been working with the commissioner for the last four years, and uh, we uh, have a very very good professional relationship. Um, and I expect that to consider over the next two months. Obviously, there will be issues uh, of handing over um, particular matters and uh, certainly briefings. Uh, and I certainly hope that the Commissioner will provide certain advice to me uh, mm -hmm. on some of those. Will you take the lead, though, and then you take a back step? step? How does it work? No, we'll, we'll do it together, and um, we'll do it in such a way, as he said, <coughs> that when I leave on the 31st of October and he starts on the 1st of November, it will be as seamless and effortless uh, and as smooth as is possible. And basically my intention is to fade out as the 31st gets closer and Ian will take over. And that's what I mean, and we both mean by seamless uh, and effortless. And, so, and we've got the opportunity to do that now. Uh, clearly it's a very busy time. Um, um, Ian will have things that he'll want to wrap up. Um, coincidentally, I've got four days uh, leave starting tomorrow and Ian will be relieving me as the Acting Commissioner mm -hmm. and that was uh, planned uh, some little time ago but uh, I'm very confident in our ability um, to do this uh, in, the w in a way that's best for the, the public, the community and the Police Department. What now for you? I'm sorry? What now for you? What, are you, what now for me? Uh, look, uh, I haven't actually given that much thought. Uh, the Premier and the Police Minister kept me terribly busy over these last <laughs> few months. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is stay really focused on this job until the end, uh, and I didn't want to be distracted by thinking mm. about that. Uh, I have been extraordinarily privileged to have been able to do this for what will be 12 years when I conclude, mm. uh, and that's uh, you know something that um, I'm very grateful for. So I'll think about the future when I conclude uh, this job. Any yeah. last things that you'd like to do before you leave the job? Any last um, sort of goals or anything you have? Uh, no, I think we're in good shape, but I also think that uh, Ian Stewart will provide the leadership necessary to take us into the next dimension. I thoroughly endorse the comments that have been made here today. If a police department ever thinks that it can't improve uh, and we've done all we can and can't be any better, then that's fatal. Um, <coughs> we need to continually be looking at better and different ways to do things and Ian Stewart will provide, not just with technology, but he'll provide the basis, whether it's discipline, your question, uh, or in other ways, to take us forward into the future. Yeah, Palm Island and what's happened with the Malu Sara and the CMC appeal against the police's uh, handling of the Warren Fleet case, what message do you have to Indigenous communities to, to show a different direction or how you're going to do things differently? Uh, I've been very lucky over the last couple of years to be the internal Indigenous champion of the Queensland Police Service and I was appointed by the Commissioner to that role um, and certainly that came after, shortly after one of the uh, CMC reports. Um, I have a very, what I believe is a very strong relationship uh, with the Indigenous community uh, in Queensland as well as other cultural groups within Queensland and I have certainly worked hard to, uh, uh, to enjoy that trust and, and develop that relationship. Uh, again, this is about uh, understanding the issues that they're dealing with uh, on a daily basis, and I do mean those, particularly the uh, more isolated communities, uh, to work with them, uh, certainly for the betterment of the, the entire community of Queensland, not just the Indigenous community. Are there specific things that you would work on, though? You mentioned very mild little statements there, but what specifically would you do? Absolutely. There are, a number of, there are a number of programs that we've been looking at in terms of uh, our relationship with Indigenous Queensland, um, but they're matters that uh, obviously I'd like to discuss mm. with the Minister and the Commissioner, uh, yeah. sorry, and the Premier. The Premier. Uh, they're matters that um, ideas that we've had for some time that we can implement um, perhaps to strengthen that relationship. And again, this is about continuous improvement uh, at all times and that engagement with all of the community. And what advice have you got to the government uh, who's currently talked about reviewing alcohol management plans from a policing perspective? What would you recommend? Oh, absolutely, that we are part of that review process and I was aware that the government had uh, agreed to that uh, arrangement and, and in fact our department's already preparing uh, to work with the government uh, as they review those plans. Ian, um, what's your view on the boss likes to put his stamp on things? Um, is the police service ready? Are you going to shake it upside down and turn it inside out? I mean, what, what's Ian Stewart going to do straight away? 
Um, I think there are a number of um, issues that are out there that we can look at. Um, there are a number of reviews that I'd like to uh, conduct as part of our, our process of renewal in the organisation as part of that continuous improvement. Uh, many of those have been flagged by uh, the mm -hmm. government's uh, review generally <coughs> of the public service and we're into that mode already as an organisation. Uh, structure, the, the structure of our organisation, we have had the same structure for over 20 years now um, and other departments have changed their structures a number of times in that same period. That's one thing that we're going to have to look at um, in terms of mm. is it the best structure, do we have the best rank uh, process in terms of uh, from top to bottom in the communication flows that occur. So there's a range of uh, issues there, again, that I'd like to mm. discuss with the Minister and ultimately That's the right. Premier. Uh, What's your views on, on AMPs? Do you think they've worked uh, or have they run their course? Um, uh, and it, these are, I mean, there's a blanket effect at the moment. It's 19 communities, 19 AMPs. Um, what do you think they've worked and what do you think uh, are the parameters for, for change? Um, I think it's very timely that we're having a review of those, uh, of those arrangements. I mean, certainly there's always going to be fors and against for any of these processes and, I, and ultimately that's what the government is for, to make decisions mm -hmm. at that level. And we'll work with the government as they, yep. as they conduct those reviews and certainly I hope that we get, well, I am sure that we will get a fair hearing from government on the issues that mm -hmm. we, we are close to our heart, particularly the safety and security of the people in those communities. Do you think that they've, they've been affected in reducing violence um, and, and other social problems? I believe there has been a reduction in violence, uh, but you may, but there are a whole range of variables and you may be able to achieve the same outcome in a different way. But again, I think that that's the positiveness that comes from a, a proper mm. review, a proper structured review, um, and having all parties to that review put submissions forward, and, and we will certainly do that as an organisation. Ian, yeah, last year I saw a case where an officer had smuggled, or been involved in smuggling 20 cartons of beer into Doomagy if you, in 2008 or 9, you oversaw the disciplinary action on that. Do you think um, having alcohol management plans is a disincentive for your staff? Um, I think that I should be very wary mm. about uh, commenting on that particular case because it's still before the review process. Will all ACs like mm. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat? Sorry, will all assistant commissioners' jobs be safe under the leadership? Or is um, that one thing that you're looking at reducing? No, certainly. I, I said that the uh, structure of the organisation is one thing that we do need to look at. Um, that will occur over a period of time. Um, it will depend on the needs of the organisation once that review is com uh, completed. Do you think it's too top heavy with all the ACs or the chief supers? Certainly, I'll, I'll be very interested in what the review outcome is. And how tough, Mr. Stewart, are you going to be on bad behaviour in the police force, like road cops, things like that? Are you going to crack down hard? Um, I think uh, my, uh, my history shows that I have very, very strong standards and I, and I ensure that people are aware of those standards. And um, my mm. tweeting, actually, uh, uh, I've used the, my tweets to uh, reinforce <coughs> those standards, but more generally, uh, my sanctions that I hand out through the discipline process um, uh, have spoken volumes about what my expectations are on behalf of the community of Queensland. In other words, what is it, what level of behaviour do we expect of our people? It's a very high bar. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm conscious of the time now. We go for half an hour, so we better start to wind up. The Gonski Review, do you have the cash for it? The Gonski Review, do you? Does Queensland Well, we finished with uh, the Commissioner Designate and Police Matters. Yeah, one, one more question, I'll take three, how about that? Will there be any changes to State Crime Operations Command? Um, certainly. Uh, when I said there'd be a review of the uh, organisational structure, I meant the whole organisation, not just That's the regional right. uh, part of the organisation. I'll be looking at all the commands. Will we have State Crime Operations Command? There are rumours going around that the whole thing will be thrown out. Uh, I, I can't foresee a time where we will need um, squads of elite investigators. Uh, that's, at the, that's at the heart of our organisation. So, but what that organisation looks like mm -hmm. in the future is something that um, I will discuss with the Minister once we've done our reviews. Uh, Mr Stewart, did you have any issues with uh, the, the uh, cutting in time of, of uh, uh, those that go to the Police Academy and do you, do you have any concerns about <coughs> the reported uh, lack of training with Taser? Uh, no, I certainly have heard of these concerns and um, I am sure that the uh, the officers who run the academy and who are in charge of the curriculum uh, at the academy uh, have made these adjustments in a proper way. So I am not concerned, bearing in mind that our recruit training doesn't go 
only for the period people are in the academy. In fact, it goes for another 12 months past that in a structured and formatted way. So and just for clarifications yeah. there, yeah. I'd just like the Commissioner just to comment in relation to, 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 to a lot of uh, yeah, misinformation. Was, yeah, Please, was, Commissioner. Yeah. Thanks, Minister. Uh, in reality, um, the, the course has only been trimmed slightly, but the taser and firearms mm. training is not diminished at all. That's right. Uh, not diminished at all, and that's unfortunately been, um, in some areas, probably misrepresented. So that part of it... Uh, and, and look, we, our program is a very good program. It's six months, and as Ian Stewart said, then for the next 12 months after officers are sworn in as constables, they're with a field training officer for the entire 12 months.